Hello there, fellow sojourners, and welcome back to another edition of Appropriate in the Culture. On today's episode, we're going to talk about the war on Christmas. Pew, 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 pew. Yes, it's the most wonderful time of year when we as a nation gather around the holiday tree, sing inclusive secular songs, and exchange gifts in honor of some non-denominational and vague feeling of mirth and schmaltz. Merry holiday to you. I'm Pastor Shane, and I'll be your secret Santa today as we appropriate some culture. <laughs> So our culture has a sort of tortured relationship with Christmas in that we love it, but we must also never speak its name. It's the Voldemort of holidays because even though it's an official federal holiday, the word Christmas contains the words Christ and Mass, which might give you the idea that Christmas has something to do with Christ and Mass. And that's something that our culture really absolutely does not want anything to do with and is deeply uncomfortable with the religious connections embedded in the American Christmas tradition. And therefore, Santa steps in for Jesus, the salutation of Merry Christmas is supplanted with Happy Holidays, and the profound lyrics of O Holy Night is replaced with Wonderful Christmas Time. Simply having. Now listen, I'm not one of those who gets bent out of shape when some employee at a department store wishes me a happy holiday instead of a Merry Christmas. I haven't served many tours in the war on Christmas, though appropriate in the culture supports the troops and we thank you for your service. I understand that there are multiple holidays around this time, though not federally recognized, but still, in an attempt to be inclusive, I can understand a company policy that encourages a more vague seasonal well-wishing. And that's all right to me. But what I can't stand is things like this. Hmm. Okay, okay, what next? Watch this, Mom. Alexa, turn on holiday lights. This year, give the gift of technology in every Buick SUV. Alexa, turn on the holiday lights. What holiday would that be exactly? I don't think they're celebrating Kwanzaa because, number one, nobody celebrates Kwanzaa. And number two, given their complexion, if they were celebrating, that would seem problematic, as they say. Well, maybe they're Jewish. They're just Jews who happen to have an eight-foot freaking Christmas tree in their living room. See, practicing Jews don't decorate their houses with Christmas lights, and non-practicing Jews who do decorate their houses with Christmas lights don't call them holiday lights because they're not crazy people. Is there like an FCC regulation that I'm unaware of that forbids mentioning Christmas? Are Jews not going to buy Buick because they're offended by the word Christmas and yet not offended by multiple Christmas trees in your ad? Or is it a holiday tree? That's increasingly the new moniker. I saw this from the new governor of New York who tweeted, the first gentleman selected the holiday tree which arrived yesterday. Cause you know, you can't mention the specific holiday associated with the item cause that's not inclusive. But she also tweeted this, Hanukkah is a time for renewal and rededication. Tonight, as we light the menorah, we remember the Jewish people's perseverance and reaffirm our commitment to keeping all New Yorkers safe from hate. Menorah? Don't you mean the holiday candlestick holder? Nah, only Christmas gets that treatment. I was at a Target or a Walmart or one of those places, and they had a Kwanzaa section labeled Kwanzaa, fittingly, and then a Hanukkah section labeled Hanukkah, appropriately enough, and then they had a holiday section. Rumor is, if you stare into a mirror and say Christmas three times, Krampus drags you to hell. Now, this doesn't bother me on a Christian level per se. God does not command that we celebrate the birth of Jesus, and Jesus was more than likely not born on December 25th. That date was chosen more for theological reasons than historical reasons. In fact, there's better evidence that Jesus was not born in the winter. Uh, plus, many Christians, like the Puritans, uh, hated Christmas and outright banned it in places. And of course, there are pagan traditions and trappings that are intermingled with Christian Christmas traditions. Christians like to co-opt things or appropriate them. So just like we said in regards to Halloween or Thanksgiving, customs and practices are not static things and meaning changes over time. 
It would only be natural then that a national holiday would become more secularized if the nation becomes more secular. And it's certainly lamentable that our culture is increasingly irreligious, but what really grinds my gears about it is the lie of it. Right? If the governor of New York really believed that a Christmas tree was exclusive and offensive, then don't put one up. Right? Don't be a coward. Have the strength of your convictions. You're not obligated or bound by law to put up a Christmas tree. But please don't put up a Christmas tree and call it a holiday tree and force us all to pretend that we're all dumber than we actually are. I mean, oh, it's, it's just a holiday tree. I mean, that, that could be anything. I mean, it could be a Labor Day tree. It could be a President's Day tree. No, a Christmas tree is not a universal symbol accompanying any holiday. It's a particular symbol, it's a particular tradition in a particular season for a particular holiday, which would be Christmas. And speaking of Christmas, Appropriate in the Culture is brought to you by an ad that's not afraid to say Christmas. Here's how you do it, Buick. Take it away, me. Ho, ho, ho. No, I'm not the real Santa. I'm critically acclaimed writer Nathan Shane Miller, and I'm here to tell you about my new book, Santa's Sweatshop, which is releasing just in time for the holidays. If you love Christmas, and Santa, and labor disputes, this is just the thing for you. Santa finds himself embroiled in a public relations nightmare when the horrendous conditions of his workshop are exposed in the press, and things get even worse when the elves go on strike. With Christmas quickly approaching, Saint Nick must find a way to end the strike or risk losing everything he's built. It's a charming story and a fun read for the whole family, and it's available right now on paperback and digital download. So get on my nice list by putting Santa Sweatshop on your shopping list, and I guarantee you'll have the best Christmas ever. Let's just move on. Now, a lot of people will sort of roll their eyes about this entire topic, right? This is so petty, this is so small. Why does it matter? What's the big deal? And I would agree in terms of a broader view of Christendom, right? It's not sinful to say happy holidays. God does not command that we celebrate Christmas. And Christians throughout history have had really mixed feelings about the holiday. However, as Christians, we do want to impact the culture. That's really the entire reason why we're doing this teaching series. And what we need to see is that the small things and minor things do make a difference in shaping and guiding the culture. If it didn't matter, if it wasn't important, then why are they doing it? Now, the same people who say, this is not important, why are you all up in arms about this, are the same ones insisting on the change. You know, Merry Christmas was the traditional refrain since before Christmas became a federal holiday. It's only in the past few decades that people, institutions, and corporations have deliberately, intentionally, and willfully acted to make Christmas the holiday that shall not be named. And then they become irritated when you notice. But more than using this as an excuse to berate a store employee who dared to wish you a happy holiday, the bigger point is to watch the way word choices shape our thinking. Now, this is something long understood in politics, right? Pro-choice, undocumented migrant, chest feeding. And public polling can vary widely based on, solely on word choices in the polling question. So not only should we be aware of how we're being manipulated by words in the world, but we should also be cognizant of the word choices we make and how they can shape the culture to be more receptive to the gospel. Well, that'll do for today. Uh, send me your Christmas cards to my social media pages and have a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays as well. And I'll see you next week for more Appropriate in the Culture. Mm -hmm.